So the Bible has predicted future events with 100% accuracy. And the Bible says we all need Jesus Christ as our Savior. I hope you believe it. What about science? Is the Bible scientifically correct? Yes. And the fact is that science has lagged centuries behind the true science in the Bible. For example, about 1500 B.C., it was commonly believed the earth rested on the shoulders of a giant named Atlas. But the Bible said the earth was freely suspended in space. It was commonly believed the earth was flat. But the Bible said the earth was a circle. It was also believed that the ocean floors were flat. But centuries before the science of oceanography, the Bible said the ocean floors had deep valleys and high mountains. Now science, with the aid of microscopes, says everything we see is made of things that we cannot see with the naked eye. Invisible molecules and atoms. But the Bible, without the aid of a microscope, said everything we see is made of things we cannot see. Now science says the spread of disease is caused by invisible germs. But centuries earlier, the Bible laid out strict, advanced hygienic laws to prevent the spread of disease. Recently, medical science discovered the blood clotting factor in a newborn reaches its peak on the eighth day, then drops. But the Bible has always required that circumcision of a male child must take place on, you guessed it, the eighth day. Listen carefully. Science does not correct the Bible. The Bible corrects science. And the Bible says that Jesus Christ created everything, including the laws of science. Now what about creation? In physics, the first law of thermodynamics is called the law of conservation of matter. It states that matter and energy can neither be created nor destroyed, but merely changes form. So my question for you is, where did matter and energy come from? And how could life come from dead matter? Yes, please tell me, how did life begin? Evolutionists like to skip this question because they cannot even begin to answer it. So they just simply say, that has nothing to do with evolution. I think they know that it is insane to believe that chemicals just spontaneously came to life. But the question requires an answer, because life could not evolve unless it was first spontaneously generated. Now let's look at the second law of thermodynamics. It is called the law of entropy. And it states that everything is not getting organized, but rather disorganized. Everything is actually moving from order to chaos. Life and the universe is disintegrating, not integrating. But evolutionists want us to believe, if you just give it enough time, it will evolve and organize itself. Whenever evolutionists are faced with a difficult problem with their theory, they always try to use time as the way out of the dilemma. Carl Sagan was a, a famous physicist, and he had a popular TV show called The Cosmos. Carl Sagan said, The information and instructions in DNA required to make one cell in your body is more than 10 to the 12th bits." Unquote. Now that is more than 100 million pages of information and instructions just to make one cell in your body. Before I go on, 
I want you to think about that. 100 million pages of information and instructions. Please, use your brain. Think. Do you really want to tell me that all those instructions were written by themselves through random chance? And if not, then please tell me who designed and wrote those instructions. Your body has about a trillion cells all working together. Now, what about Charles Darwin? At the time that Darwin established his theory, science did not know much about the, the human cell. At that time, it was believed that a cell consisted of just a, a membrane and fluid. But now, we have the science of microbiology, and it allows us to look so closely inside a cell that something really amazing is revealed. Inside a cell, it's like a giant factory, and it appears to have trucks, conveyor belts, assembly lines, and an endless assortment of tools and machinery moving various uh, chemical elements and compounds. It is more complex and vaster than the largest factory on earth. <laughs> and it's all microscopic in size. All the microscopic machines inside a cell are operating and following the instructions written on the DNA. Do you think that random chance could have produced such a thing? Of course not. The Bible says that Jesus Christ created everything.